Hello, welcome to Talks at Brickstone, your one-stop podcast for research, insights, and interviews on thought leadership issues relating to Africa's infrastructure, built, and natural environment. I'm your host, Femi Aufala. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the key the topic, key issues in gas commercialization and monetization in Nigeria. And we'll be talking with Mr. John Chibweze. He is currently an AGM with Amni Petroleum, and he will speak on a wide range of issues, including gas to power and also issues related to gas commercialization in Nigeria. Mr. T- Mr. John is senior legal practitioner with proven C-suite management experience backed with over 17 years within the space of natural resources and finance-based transactions. He's highly reputed an international expert with broad range of expertise in finance, infrastructure, energy, and project transactions. You're welcome, Mr. John. Good morning, Femi. Thank you for having me here. It's great to be here. All right then, thank you. So today we'll be talking more around, you know, gas monetization trends and opportunities in Nigeria. We'll look at issues related to gas marketing and other in-depth areas. And we'll also get some inside secrets from someone like John, who has had, you know, the legal aspect of the experience. He has also had, you know, commercial aspect. Now he's, you know, in, the, in an environment where he's using both areas to to make advice and, and push projects forward. So the key thing for us at this point now is to see, you know, a number of trends have happened within the gas monetization in Nigeria, but what do really what do we really even mean by gas monetization? You know, it really has been a buzzword used time and time again within the Nigerian energy space, you know, are we actually monetizing gas? What exactly do you think this is all about? Well, thank you for me. Um, you see, when you, when you talk about gas monetization as a buzz in Nigeria, you typically hear about it from the governmental or regulatory perspective, because these are the ones who have the buzz. Businesses don't really talk about their plans unless they are in effect. But the, but, but the reality is that gas monetization is two ways. Yeah? That from a nationalistic perspective, as a country that has a sovereign ownership over its natural resources, the government would like to increase its revenue apart from upstream petroleum from, to, from gas as well. Mm-hmm. Considering that we have a lot of gas deposits, uh, gas base in Nigeria, there is no reason why, from a national perspective, the government shouldn't consider how best to commercialize that asset. Correct. Yeah. Second, but the reality is that on the flip side of that coin, there's also the private sector side of it. Mm-hmm. Insofar as the government are not monopolizing the production of that gas, it means somebody is spending money to produce it. Mm-hmm. This, that, that, that is where the um, oil and gas company is coming, Correct. the operators of these assets. They also, from a business perspective, need to commercialize gas, also from a profit earning perspective. So Correct. sometimes those two points don't meet because the nationalistic view is commercialized regardless. Mm-hmm. The business view is we can't commercialize unless it makes dollars and cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cents there is dollars and cents. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this the reason we've been in this um, back and forth for a very long time in Nigeria because, on the, on the, I, I think, but lately you've seen that there's, there's a more stringent drive by yeah. the government. There's a bit, lot more seriousness about the way mm-hmm. they're approaching this conversation and it's beginning to tell. Correct. A lot of projects, a lot of things are moving in the sense that the government really wants to commercialize this gas. Correct. So the buzzword you're hearing is gas commercialization because the, com- the country as a whole wants to earn revenue from that. From that. For okay. too long, we've been in a mon- monopolistic economy, just call it oil right. revenue, want to diversify. That is where the buzz comes from. And, and to, to just broadcast your point, you know, there's a, um, a country in the Middle East, Qatar, you know, they've, they've focused on gas for a long time. They've had a very strong policy. They've had a number of LNG trains there, a number of gas projects in itself. And I think last year or so, they decided to, you know, pull out of OPEC, OPEC because they wanted to just focus on their gas, you know, development itself. So it's very viable for a country, you know, even as big as Nigeria to also have a very strong gas strategy. Now, as a 
private uh, person, you know, um, there have been of, there have been a number of trends and opportunities in Nigeria related to gas. Um, we've seen the NLNG happen, you know, over like ten years ago at a large scale. I think that should be the largest gas project in Nigeria today. First one, yes. yeah, the first one. So, what have been, what have you seen so far? What are the trends you've seen, um, starting from when? You know, historically, you know what has happened within the gas space industry that you think is of relevant now. Well, let's let's pick it up from the LNG that you mentioned. The LNG, why did it do? Why was it? Why did it do well? Okay. LNG had a lot of um, what's the word? I would say a lot of support. Support, not just support. It has a lot of things. For instance, LNG had a decree backing it. Okay. Exempting it from tax. Okay. Even the, uh, a tax holiday. Yeah. LNG had a lot of. National federal. Well, it, it happened during the military era, which yeah. was easier to do those things. As it was more difficult to do it in the civil era. Mm-hmm. But there was the government was direct, focused, and intentional about it. Mm-hmm. Albeit it was the military government who could yeah. do and undo. But you could see that they passed the decree. Things went and it started happening. But the energy has a value chain that you require to kick off a gas and energy supply. Yeah. The chain production, the financing, the offtake, those things were in place. So it wasn't just because they had government backing. Now, transfer that to other gas projects in Nigeria. You don't see the same level of level. Um, commitment. Commitments. Right. Let's pick one area of gas. Let's talk about uh, pricing. Okay. Instance. Yeah. Now, energy enjoyed all those fiscal fiscal exemptions blah, 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 under those decrees. Do companies now have those exemptions? No. Mm-hmm. So, is it a fair playing ground? No. Yeah. So, if you, you you can't expect the private investor in today's market who does not have those upsides to just throw in money because the government wants to commercialize. I, I, the perfect sweet spot would have been for the government and the private sector to be in tandem. Yeah. That is where you see economy thriving in anywhere in the world. Correct. But where you have the government on one side of the polar and the other and the private sector and they are polarized and there's no middle ground. In Nigeria why is there no middle ground? It's, it's we've been talking about gas for 20, 30 years, if I can remember. It started from gas flare in 19, President Buhari's first term as a military Correct. man, yeah. he passed the um, decision of flare gas, mm-hmm. continuous flaring gas. So, we come down to the 90s, we don't have the gas master plan. Yeah, we don't remember that. The West African gas master plan. So, there's been a lot of talk about mm-hmm. that. But you see, insofar as the government is booking revenue from petroleum, mm-hmm. the, the, I won't use word seriousness, the um, political will. Yeah. To do what's necessary to other sector. It's not going to be as strong as that somebody who is focused comes there to do that. That's true. Because you're sitting pretty on two million dollar, two plus million dollar barrel a day. Yeah. Doing it, it will come the money will come regardless of what you do. That's true. So it's, it's the reason why we're not the economy in Nigeria is that reason. Let apart from gas commercialization, why don't we have other exports? Why why won't we export palm oil? Or mm-hmm. it's that same reason. Yeah. You're sitting pretty on that money. Mm-hmm. So until <laughs> Old folks to say until that oil money dries up, we will not wake up and do other things. That's true. So That's we are getting to the point where it's drying up now. So there's, no, there's more seriousness. Yeah. That's so the trend I'm seeing in Nigeria is that the government on one hand is trying to they become more serious in fairness mm-hmm. to them. Not just for because they want to commercialize gas, but also to utilize gas. Mm-hmm. Commercialization is one aspect of gas. There's also utilization. Yeah. yeah. We have dependency that we're not actu- actual actual uh, Actualizing, I think that's yeah. the word. Mm-hmm. We have a massive deficit in our power sector. That's true. It's like Sitting I take on up. that much gas and not having power, it's like somebody who has petrol, a tank farm in his house, but his car not moving. It's ridiculous. So and you're flaming this gas. It's just ridiculous. So nothing makes sense from a pictorial perspective of like looking at Nigeria mm-hmm. as in, from you have this gas, you have no power. You flare this gas, you have no money. What's wrong with this picture? That's true. So I think government are getting. I mean, I don't know if it's because they have they are trying because there, there, there are different um, pressure points in this economy with mm-hmm. gas. Mm-hmm. The power sector is one subject on its own that requires the gas. The government is serious. There's a lot of power. We invariably have to whip up the gas market. True. It will look like a serious iron overall. It may it may have an interest specific to power. True. But it's to drive the entire value chain regardless. Correct. It got me serious about selling, commercializing, not commercializing. Yeah. You also have the same visible commitments. So I don't know where the government is coming from with pleasure or pleasure, but we are happy about it. So, so the, I think the latest thing that we, we that's on now is there's this new gas uh, 
Flegas. The Flegas concessions. Yes. yes. Well, I think they are, it's just starting. They've issued they've an yeah. EOI and things. Let's see how that goes and how that helps to progress things and things like that. You see, that, that's an interesting, um, interesting uh, um, yeah, issue. It's, it, it, ordinarily, it should be it should be laudable, yeah. Yeah. The government find find a way to comply like this law. But the question is, why do you think that's been flooded in the first instance? Because they're economically viable for the IOCs to produce. So the why, gas. Should, why is it economically viable for them to produce this gas? Because there's no clear off taker, so to say. You see, I think you have to walk backwards. Uh, yeah. Solve this problem. <laughs> supposed to be creating a new door. door. <laughs> <laughs> because. Okay, let's solve, okay, let's solve the problem now. So okay. if, if there's nobody so there was one embed, not not embed, like like there was a company called Gas Aggregator. Yes, there still is. It's not a big company, it's a is a regulator in a way. Yes, so so that company is meant to say, you know what, just if like you want to sign a PPA to say, you know what, you want to go and do power, okay, I'll buy power from you. No, no, no. Gas aggregator doesn't buy power, that's the embed. Gas aggregator middleman's gas producer mm-hmm. and gas of taker. Mm-hmm. That's what the they'll say, okay, it's, you, the embed is kind of the same thing, in the mm-hmm. same term that embed is middleman's power. I know. Embed says, you know what, I know that you guys don't have anybody to to buy your power. Yeah. I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy and I'll sell down. Yeah. Correct. In the gas uh, instance, I greet somebody who is in the middle between the producer and the off-taker. It's give me your gas. Um, um, uh, com- what's the word I'm looking for? Compound this gas here. Yeah. Then who needs gas? Come see me. So don't now, don't now, you think that's the middle? That, that's the, from my own point of view. The point, the, the question then is, how much are they selling those gas? Okay. Okay. That, that's where the DSO comes in. Okay. The government has the Nigerian Niger government has something called the domestic supply obligation on yeah. all producers to supply quantum of their gas to local obligations. It makes from a, from a nationality perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I produce gas as a country. Why should I have to? Pay more for it. It's a local source. Uh, it's, it's a local um, not source. Sure. Yeah, source available. Yeah. yeah, people here should benefit from that. I get it. It makes commercial perfect sense. So companies are required to sell that quantum of that gas locally. Mm-hmm. So agri- mostly push it to the aggregator. That's that's kind of gas. Ordinary supposed to use the power as a uh, like GTP gas to power okay. projects. Correct. That's where you buy that pool. Then okay. when they've met that obligation, they're allowed to export the rest of. At, at export parity prices. Correct. Now okay. it's assumed that in the long run, the local market and the export market and the international market would, would, would pair. Correct. That's what you say that they were taking export parity. Okay. Now that hasn't happened. Oh wow. Because you're still having regulatory constraints on gas. Yeah. See the thing is, uh, if you walk back to this chain I'm talking about now, if uh, Mr. Company X produces one million MBT of MBTU of gas. And it's why to sell down 40% of it to, to the local aggregator and, and sell down 40 at say $2.50 per MBTU and the percentage price is $5.50. It means that commercially it's losing 50% of profits, of, of prospective profits yeah. for that value at least. Yeah. So ordinarily he would want to sell 100% offshore and make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Now if you gave him the option to sell 100% in Nigeria for that same price, he would happily upload it to you. Yeah. Happily. Because why would he bother to sell internationally myself? Well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Price is the same. money is the dollar, the dollar bill is the same to him. Yeah. Now that's not happening because the government wants to subsidize that local resource for the use in Nigeria. And that's that's it makes sense. Okay. Why should we pay for water when we live near the river? It makes sense. Now, going down the fact that 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 line item, the gas goes from the gas regulator to whoever of taking for power or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then that cost translates ultimately to your tariff. In, your life bill. Yeah. Yeah. For that to happen smoothly, yeah, there must be commercial upsides for each of the value chain um, participators. Yeah. The gas seller, the IPP, the distributor, blah, blah, blah. There must be. Now, what we have is that that end user, that tariff payer, is not paying, is not yet paying commercial value for kilowatt hour of power. Okay. Because it's not yet reflective of the inputs to that kilowatt of hour. Okay. Now that is where the government has been dealing for a long time. The but this flare gas thing is meant to be a bidding thing, like you are meant to the bid. Flag, the, the flare gas concession program is meant to you. It, 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 it's meant to allow bid bid for flare sites. These are flare sites, right? You want bid for? Oh, I want to bid for site. There's a bit of them. We learn to implement the operator. You buy the flare gas and you pay the operator and the government. The fire, and you, you go, you go commercialize it. Mm-hmm. Now, for that to happen, the the investor, the, the, the bidder has to have a plan for that flare gas. You yeah. Have to have a, 
is it maybe you want to do a, a mini LNG or whatever you something or gas you have to whatever you have the plans you have the money you people to put together then you go bid bid win now the bidding is not a problem in Nigeria we, we always know how to bid yeah when when Isaac was first uh, set up in uh, is it 2001 or 2 or 3 or so yes. there was a thousand Jenko licenses I don't know power Exactly. So it's not about bidding and winning. That's not where we are. We're, 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 the reason why this is good and not produce is because you are going to produce that asset. Okay. Because you have not walked back for the question of why it's, not, why it's not happening. It's like saying that, oh, we don't have enough power in Nigeria. Let's, let's give general licenses. Is that why you don't have power in Nigeria? It's because of like, ah, we get a power license, you get a license, you get a license. But that doesn't mean power. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not where we have. That, 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 that's where I think we are. We're, we're, but like you said, We'll see where this goes. Exactly. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, great one. Um, I think the other part is for for issues related to gas to power. I mean, it's clear that, you know, with the n- amount of gas we have in this country, you know, um, we can generate tons and tons of power, even power, provide power to the rest of other parts of Africa, to, you know, to generate their own. So even provide gas, I mean, to other parts of Africa to generate their own power. So in terms of, um, we've seen also that uh, a number of companies are now going into um, pipelines, you know, laying out pipelines for gas or even going into other areas in gas marketing related to L- LPG and things. And what's your view of these nodes or let me say subsectors of the gas value chain itself? That's the pipeline um, related companies or, or the companies doing the gas marketing? Well, I think I think I think it's ultimately a commercial decision for the for the for the um, parties in question because yes, I'm, you, there's a lot of um, um, trucking, even mm-hmm. energy trucking going yeah. on the gas because sometimes it's because the cost of transportation and logistics in in pipe in piping or in trucking mm-hmm. it's a commercial decision you make. Yeah. Now I've 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 seen projects where the transportation uh, logistics were handled by trucking. Compression and trucking, and then decompression at the other side. But mm-hmm. you have to consider things like road infrastructure in Nigeria, security, and all, and all what not that's supposed to just piping. There are projects that I think I've I've seen well, um, um, uh, projects in south, south, one mm-hmm. north, run by that trucking, and I think it just boils down to the, to the final model of the of mm-hmm. the factory. It's all it's all commercially driven. Yeah. Now, if these projects are and I think most of them are local DSO projects you're talking about. Correct. The ones I know about are DSO gas, which means they're being sold under regulated pricing. Mm-hmm. It means as an investor, you are working within a defined or definite regulated price yeah. for your offtake. Mm-hmm. So you have to then find the best cost effective means of that logistics you want to build. Well, yeah. Now, ultimately, I think that for larger projects, for what happening at the Lekki Bridge or Black Bridge Zone, I don't think trucking will suffice for this kind of project. Okay. You need very extensive volumes of supply for this kind of project. Correct. That kind of project, you would have to go back to gas pipelines mm-hmm. and bear the capex cost, at least over a long term period, those kind of costs upset themselves. But That's true. So, then also it's depending on the size. Yeah. For the mini projects, you don't expect to lay that pipeline infrastructure when you know you're just, unless you want to share that infrastructure with other asset and projects. Yes. But for bigger, bigger projects, I don't think that you can truck a big project. You can't even find it for instance. I'm sure it's, it's, I mean, you can't even begin to comprehend trucking the gas there. Yeah, so you have to play the So, project size, pricing, and by, by, by in mind, that would be the refinery and co op projects. Sometimes I, I, I as well as international offtake. Mm-hmm. They're not always local. So, now we should get pricing. Local. That's true. Yeah, so, That's true. those are the kind of commercials that drive that decision. Okay, thank you on that. So, now move to areas which is back to still the main issue of gas to power. Um, it hasn't happened as we probably would have loved um, because if you remember the gas master plan, there are meant to be like three gas gathering infrastructure being done. Um, I think one of them was tried to, was, was being done by Seven or, or maybe some other yeah. developers that yeah. took Nigeria's um, some, some upstream upstream gas uh, agreement, so to say. But for gas to power to really happen, you know, in your own view, what should be the commercial framework for, for a private sector, you know, in that regard? You know, you know the power question in Nigeria is, is an age-old question. 
Yeah. That's what many people's <laughs> but, but it's it's it, I think it's actually as simple as tariffy. Okay. But I, I because the, the problem I'm having is that power is something like is the it, it seems to be the last vestige of the Nigerian person mm-hmm. from the government. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the last subsidizable item that anybody called Nigerian can enjoy as a Nigerian, yeah. which and it's something that everybody needs. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, the good, good uh, petroleum, uh, why is it petroleum? I mean, pump petroleum, yeah. subsidization has been disputed, subsidized, subsidized, to the point where I think we've agreed that subsidy there can go, yeah. even though we've not politically estimated it properly. Correct. But power is something very, very, is a, it's, a, it's more, far more essential. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, if you don't have a generator, you don't have a car. You may not need petroleum, but you need power. So yeah. that's the, the, the social aspect of it is that the people in Nigeria are accustomed mm-hmm. historically to subsidize power. Yeah. They've never paid commercial value, don't know what the value chain represents for the type of power in Nigeria. Yeah. And it's 60, how old is this country? Where I was, six, 60 years, 60 right? Years. Yeah. So you want to look up on that and say, yeah, that thing took 60 years, it ends now. That's very difficult to have. <laughs> Even in social communication conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's square one. And then square two. How many people what is the level of commercialization of the value chain in the power sector? Is, is, how well are the, are the digital companies able to meet their natural applications? That's true. Gas suppliers. Even at the subsidize of gas. Yeah. Because then if you go if you if you if you, if you, if you work from the top end down, the gas the gas um, producer raises debt or equity or whatever. Yeah. It goes to start the gas project and then into a long-term GST with very strict take or pay obligations. Mm. So yeah. talk about that take or pay, you know, just for an enlightenment of our sponsors okay. for this podcast. In terms of when you when you sign a gas purchase agreement, um, a number of developers or, or off-takers tend to confuse this take or pay that, oh, does it mean that even if you don't provide the gas, I will have to pay. Or if I provide the gas, whether you use the gas or not, I will. can you just provide well, clarity on that? Take up pay is one, one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is contracted, contract, contracted net, net supply. Okay. So it's from the buyer side, you, the seller will enforce the copy which means that you have to agree a minimum quantity, a contracted quantity of gas that okay. I will give to you. Okay. I will commit to delivering some quantity to you. You commit to me that you take or pay the further quantity. Okay. That enables me to plan as a okay. where to put capex down, knowing that this is my cash flow. Correct. In worst case scenario. Okay. It's a mean it's a benchmark for my cost cost build for that project. Okay. Now it's on business take up equation that I can track what that project represents in real time so over the years. Okay. Now take up pay if you don't take you still pay. What happens is that you can you you make up the gas, assuming I don't. Now, that's on the flip side. If, you, if I don't supply the the, 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 the contracted gas, yeah, I make up the gas for you. Okay. So you always have that agreed volume. Okay. And, and I always have that agreed cash. Okay. Okay. So you, you always have if you need ten MPT for a plant or whatever, mm-hmm. you will always get it. Then okay. And I will get ten dollars. Yes, yeah, so but if if my plant is having maintenance for some reasons and things and. Downtime. You still have to supply, yeah, or downtime. I still have to supply the ten MBG. The, 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 the risk of it is that I've already spent this money producing this gas. So the take of pay is that you have to pay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, the, the ironically, the, the, the reverse is not always like most GSA that have been involved with the power project. The LDs involved for, on the uh, the good damages and the output because it's normally a percentage of its other than quantity. Oh, say five percent of my CMQ is my LD. Okay. So basically, I'm, because it's a, it's a very tight group I'm working with this project. Okay. So I really, I'm exposed almost at all times. Okay. You are the one receiving and getting, so you have to have the money. Okay. Okay. I will, I will, I will use the, the quote in the movie. <laughs> when, they, when they come to collect their money, I say, don't have it. So, <laughs> Pay me. Yeah. I don't care. Oh, you don't have the money. Pay me. Exactly. Oh, you, you don't have, so it's, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You're not meant to go me because I have such a cost, tight, capex of I'm working. Now, assuming I'm going to default, I have a gas event, mm-hmm. or gas availability event, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, do, first of all, the obligation is on me not to have those things because I need to make this money that you're paying. Yeah. So then the reason you normally have LDs on you uh, to, to the buyer, 
giving you right to call some the only damage is on me. Okay. What I've seen happen in those auditions is that they will benchmark it against the CNQ. Okay. I say 5% of my CNQ is with my LTs. Okay. But I don't want to lose that money anyway. That's true. Yeah. So this, that, that, the, gas, the gas seller is always in a very poor position. In that, in that, in, it, it, it looks as if it's favored to the yeah, but it's not. Because when it's considered the operational risk involved, it's not. Yeah. It looks that way because you see, you have the, all these um, take up applications and all whatnot. I had to make up gas application, then I have very low LDs compared to LDs you may have on that. Because what happens is, the gas, what, what should happen is, if you're building a PPA, purchase agreement, you have to factor in whatever events you have in the gas, in the GSC, to transfer those same liabilities to your off-taker. Okay. So you, you're not stuck with the gas event liability. Correct. That's how you But in most cases, depending on what is involved, it could vary. It could vary. It could vary. No, no. So let's also push that into the gas transportation agreements. So, for example, you have a gas field, and I'm I'm here to help you build a pipeline to move that gas to where you want it. You know, um, what kind of like liabilities or damages, shield or, or or terms or you know that the 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 transporter is being up, exposed to. Say, for example, gas losses. Are there any like take or pay in that regard to? Well, these are commercial agreements. All agreements are all agreements are solicit negotiation. Okay. You have market trends in every every sector that okay. typically drive the agreement. They tell you this is the market, this is the prevailing market rate for this or that. In in in, in terms of um of um of gas transportation, there are inherent most of the solutions most of them are done by pipeline owning companies. Okay. So they they is is a well building track. They're not building to build a new pipeline for a project. It's really come with that project. Definitely. Take one as Azura, for instance. Yeah. So pipe their own gas and build those for sure. That's why I'm saying not to buy from. If you go to gas aggregator to buy gas, that commission will really include the EGTA, the gas transfer agreement. Mm-hmm. With either one of the owners of the pipeline is nearest to your to your load. Okay. Uh, so this connection agreement and all whatnot. Those agreements are more or less standardized. Okay. Yeah, so the risk factors are very determinable. Okay. Okay. Short, short of gas, gas, gas pipeline being broken into by um, militants like it's happening in those days. Yeah. The, the best strategies are very controlled. Right? Okay. okay. Where you have more issues, or where you have more issues, or where you have more worries is gas, gas is that. When the gas supply does have the gas event, it so means that something that causes an, 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 an ability of gas has occurred. But okay. it's, it's not something that, that they manage. Okay. You have to now bears that risk because you have to take up your applications. Yeah. So if if start from the gas, the person selling gas to the to the power to the IBP on an GSA, maybe has a PPA with the um embed. Embed or okay. whoever embed that sells that this could be. So now this value chain of gas power for instance, if it's not commercial try the value chain, nobody will start. Okay. I won't, plug, I won't build the IDP plant. I can't get gas. I can't get gas this time at the price that I can make profit from selling power. I won't build the, the gas plant. I can't sell the gas and make profit. I won't distribute the, the power I use to produce it. I can't make tire income. So the end person that carries the ball normally is in disco. But he sits at the end of the value chain. He's supposed to be the one between him and the, and the commercial and, and, the, and, the, and the optical that boss. Tariff payers. Now, question: When you're not paying commercial tariff that represents that value chain, and B, you're not paying at all. Yeah. So school day, they have two main issues. One is <laughs> collection collection losses. Yeah. And two tariff the tariff commercial value of tariff. Yeah. So assuming that all tariff were paid, it may not be commercial enough. Yeah. In this case, most tariff are not paid. Hmm. So you see, there's a lot of commercial losses there, and it flows back down the value chain. So that's where we are. That's where we are okay. today. So why would you put more money into this kind of value chain? This question. So okay. So if you cannot, if you feel that the power of the power line along where gas can be used is being challenged, uh, what about other, you know, domestic supply obligation to use to commercialize power, maybe as LPG or as any like domestic uh, commercial use? Do you think there's a market in that area? Well, I think there's, there's an industrial market in that area. Not necessarily. The, 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 there's a lot of um, um, utility demand for, for gas. There's a commercial, industrial, residential. Mm-hmm. The, the biggest one I think is residential, but everybody lives somewhere. Mm-hmm. Not everybody in industry. 
I'm not going to mention that. Discuss so much. Now, if you use that as feed stock, for instance, yeah, obviously that's a very longing fruit for you to Correct. acquire DSO for your feed stock gas. Yeah, that's why it's for my industrial users of gas. Some some operations use gas as feed stock. So that's that's a near hanging fruit. That may even um, catalyze other other segments of industry. If 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 a producer is doing well, if an industrial producer is doing well, I imagine it's and, and enhance yeah, enhance the supply. Yeah. And then could, it was a, any part of that stuff that is doing well boosts the value chain. Okay. But when it comes when the biggest subsector or sub or you or you like users yeah. are the most underperformers. Yeah. <laughs> and there that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, that's because industrial like I probably pay you because he's a businessman. That's trying to do business. So the commercial person will also buy it if he uses power his ship or drive his factory. Yeah. But when you turn but when you turn it to turn it to power and turn it to a tariff and then I'm not paying that tariff. Yeah, Paul, you have a point. You have a point. So now in terms of um, partnerships that government have signed with private sector in terms of government existing gas infrastructure. Um, well I mean when I was young I I I we heard about a lot of gas pipelines being busted in oil and also, you know, being done in gas itself. But time and time again, you know, do you think there's a need for, you know, to replenish the existing gas network infrastructure owned by government today? Not from a point of view of producing the gas from the field, but, you know, we need to have a gas scrubbing plant here or a processing plant here. Can private sector provide those kind of interventions? I think that, I think that, that they are taking a very strong very bold step in that direction. Okay. I think that is probably when that plant comes on the street. That's the method the Yes, that's the version of plants the refineries What was it called? Um, methane and methane, methane and um, fertilizer or something, yeah. yes. That is that, that, that I think that that answers the question that why aren't probably at the beginning of this beginning of this slide. I think mm-hmm. it's because it's because a very big one and it's made it's feel that it can work. What about the one done in in, in Dorama? In River State, it's, 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 I heard there's a company that's been signed for that one recently okay. as well. So they're okay. like, I think they're part of the one that's doing trucking. I'm not sure. Okay. There's a lot of you see a lot of that happening. Shell, it was they announced last week about new new uh, project they kicked off for that. Okay. So there, there's a lot of things happening, but maybe we're not getting enough media or positive media in that Correct. direction. Okay. Because I think and I something another thing is that all eyes are on that to find to kick off because it's a major. Was the kind of the, the sheer vastness of the project mm-hmm. and the possibilities it can entail to the economy and to Nigeria as, a, as an exporter potentially. Mm-hmm. It's not something that excites anybody just to listen to. Correct, yeah. Just imagine for once you're not exporting. Yeah, yeah. You're no longer importing and you're not, you are refining enough for local demand and you're exporting. Yeah. That's what we've, what we've talked about for, since we were kids. Right. That was the Nigerian government has tried to do at the government. Yeah, I'm sure that was the LNG's objective. They've tried this in several public and private. Uh, most of this public, um, um, the Nigerian owned petroleum refineries, yeah. the land, some of these projects were attempted at that. Okay. But you see, we tell you that these things are not rocket science. Yeah. Wait, so much. they do this thing without having to break their head. Someone also made that to set up a. Um, a, what he called in his own words, the Rose Road Refinery. This person used to be a banker in, uh, I think in Oman or where I remember. He had to build the Rose Road Refinery in there, cost much less than what we're using to maintain our own refineries, these old refineries here. Hmm. So he doesn't understand the math. So that's, if you take out um, inefficiencies like that in the system, then you plug it. If, when that day goes on, on stream, secondly, you find out a lot of modular refineries that are also being encouraged okay. by the, uh, by the um, government and the, um, the, 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 the command board. Okay. Because they're doing more like they are meaning not everybody up there that level, but you can play at whatever small node you can operate at. Yeah. You know, if you can commercialize those smaller players with the big ones playing their own, find that the economy becomes more efficient. Hmm. He that to what we're doing was that we were illegalizing those those smaller players. Oh, so, like finally you, you always heard of uh, arrest and like finally they were deemed illegal. Yeah. You didn't think that because people were there and get license for them, but not because the economy didn't need them. Okay. So it was just that whole law versus need uh, theory playing out. But the government has come find that we need this thing. Yeah. So that's why they want to make the legalizing a bit easier. 
Yeah. Because you're plug in this right. Otherwise, you go, you have bunk ring. Mm-hmm. Bunk will not stop. It doesn't bunk will not stop. You have this whole problem. So now that we're trying to commercialize at several levels, private sector commercialization, I'm not talking about government involvement. Okay. Government doesn't even need to be. What government needs to do is regulate the environment. That's true. Be conducive for me. That's true. Bring the, the energy. You might have said the present energy was a, was a, was a built. It was built because the government had to do what it should do. Yeah. They put in their own equity. They made the laws around the energy. They left it to the renewal to do to run it. And it was a successful story. That's what they need to do with the with the, with the gas yes. the downstream itself. And we're about time. It's about time. And hopefully we'll get that good is we're talking about since. All right then. Um so we've come to the end of today's podcast. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast, you can visit our website in the link below. And if you want to support us, then you can also help us to share, subscribe, and also review over in our iTunes or any other platform you are listening from. Um, thank you so much, Mr. John. Uh, really nice talking to you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, then.